Clubs in the Premier League pay some insane wages, with players on average earning $75,000 per week, which is way higher than the $52,000 of La Liga, the $43,000 of Serie A, the $39,000 of the Bundesliga, and the $29,000 of League 1. Of course, this is a league average, so certain players at certain big clubs will be earning way more than that, and certain youth players at certain lower clubs will be earning way less than that. So today I'm going to put a salary cap on the Premier League of half a million pounds a week to see what impact that will have on the league. Still though, the players will be earning on average in a 23-man squad around £22,000 per week, which is not bad at all. With the salary cap in place, we're going to simulate into the future and come back at certain points to see what's happening. The main point of the video, of course, though, is that wages are significantly reduced in the Premier League. And I've got three questions that I want answering. Will the Premier League still be regarded as the most reputable league in all of Europe? Will elite players still want to play in the Premier League or are they going to move elsewhere for big money? And will the wonder kids produced by English clubs stay loyal or will they also move on for big money? Gotta say a quick shout out to Pig with a Moustache for creating this database for me. So thank you very much. If you want to see his channel, it's linked down in the description. Now, I've not touched these teams at the start of this experiment other than the salary cap. So if we click into Man City, they have all of their usual players in there with Haaland and De Bruyne on £350,000 per week. Collectively, that is £700,000 per week or £200,000 per week over the salary cap. So you can't register both of them into the team. And as you can see, loads of players are not registered here for Man City. They are just under the salary cap, but they're going to be playing a lot of youth team players, I think, going forward because, um, well, there's barely anyone registered outside of Julian Alvarez, Kyle Walker, Phil Froden, Sergio Gomez, and Stefan Ortega, and Scott Carson. So in season one, we're going to see quite a topsy-turvy Premier League table. I presume teams with good youth setups like Leeds will do very well. Uh, Brentford have a very good B team. I'm sure they'll do quite well. Man City, they won't do so well, I don't think. And I was correct about Brentford. They've come third in the table. Leeds have been relegated. Oh my word, Man City, though, have only just avoided relegation. Wow, and it must have been on goal scored because they've got uh, this minus seven goal difference with Leeds as well. So Julian Alvarez with 18 goals this season was worth registering because he has kept them up basically with the goal scored. Also, if you ignore Arsenal on 71 points, there is 12 points between second place and 20th. Sign me up for a salary cap because if this is the result, then I want to see it. That's amazing. £500,000 per week would equal to £26 million per year. So that's what we should be seeing these clubs spending on wages. As you can see, Man United are at the top of the list with £195 million. So they've clearly been spending. Every single club is over what the salary cap should be. But of course, they're still paying for players that are at the club. I think essentially as well, this salary per annum is for every single player in every single team. So even 50 years in the future, I don't think we're going to see any team really underneath the 26 million, but the idea is this trend and these numbers will get lower and lower every season. And I'm sure lots of transfers are going to be happening as well. And as you can see, players like Bernardo Silva, De Bruyne, Akanji, Kyle Walker, Mares have all left to join different clubs around Europe. And they're just players that have left in the January transfer window. Look at that. Oh yeah, Rodri and Cancelo left as well. And they're all being sold for massively cut price as well. There's no way De Bruyne gets sold for 16 million. And because all of these players have moved clubs already, going back to the very start of the experiment before we even simulated the season, looking at players with at least 170 current ability and above, essentially the most elite players in the world, a vast majority of them are playing in the Premier League. There's quite a few playing in Spain and Germany and the odd player playing in France as well. By the end of season one, it's down to just five. That is wild how quickly that's changed in just one season. It'll be interesting to find out throughout this video where the best players in the world ends up in the transfer windows. Obviously, the transfer window is going on in real life right now, and the best place to keep up to date with all the transfer news is the One Football app. For me, it's the best app to get all of the transfer rumors and gossip and official news from different sources all in one place. It's also the best place to keep up with all your favorite clubs from around the world. Follow them and get push notifications straight through to your phone when anything happens in their game so you miss nothing. One Football have been a long time sponsor of the channel, so thank you very much to them. Make sure you do download the app for completely free from the top line of the description to help me and the channel out.
So already the first point, will players leave the Premier League to go to get earn bigger wages elsewhere? The answer is conclusively yes after just one season. 33 years in the future though, I want to be asking the question, is the Premier League still the most reputable league in all of Europe? And the answer is no, it's dropped to fifth in European reputation rankings, way behind the Bundesliga, Serie A, Liga and La Liga. And that is quick to change as well, like 33 years is not a long time really. There is a bit of a shake up to the Premier League as well, Man City have just won the time still ahead of Arsenal and Man United, but Middlesbrough in the Champions League places and West Ham, Brentford and Wolves look to become an established European side. Chelsea, Liverpool missing out, Newcastle dropping down despite their rich owners and Tottenham getting relegated. In fact, since we started this experiment, this is Man City's first title. Arsenal and Man United seem to be the strongest teams in this, but Crystal Palace have won a few titles. Uh, Leeds have won a couple as well across different decades. Leicester even picking up another title too. So there is some difference to the Premier League, although not quite as much as I was maybe hoping for. Are we missing any big names in the championship? Well, Brighton, Leicester and Crystal Palace are down there, but no one like Major is... Oh my word. I, a lot of you will know this, some of you won't. I'm a Lincoln City fan. Lincoln City have just won the championship. I have never ever in my entire life of playing football manager seen Lincoln get to the Premier League of their own accord, even in an experiment like this. I've never seen it. I've never seen them get there. This is, this is, stop the video. This is perfect. That's all I want to see. YouTube career over. That's all I wanted this entire time. I'm joking. I will keep the video going, but uh, only if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm waiting. Once that happens, I'll carry the video on. I'm sorry to derail the video, but I've got to go a year in the future to find out how they get on. You, you know what? I'll, I'll take a season in the Premier League. I'll take it. Let's take a look at the salaries instead. A reminder, £26 million is what they should be spending at the absolute maximum. And there's only one team adhering to that. Lincoln City. It's probably why they got relegated, to be fair. Every other team, Blackpool upwards, are over that £26 million. But remember, this salary per annum does take into account every single salary for every single player across all of their youth teams as well. So this will be probably higher than the £26 million, although I wasn't expecting it to be, you know, more than double really in some situations. This is showing the overall trend though, that this is dropping down. Of course, it was like nearly 200 million pounds right at the start. So this is dropping. But Liverpool, for example, are still paying some players some big wages, 66, 65, 61, 54 there. Are they actually registered though? That's the question. And the answer, if we sort it by contract information, sort it by the wages is no. So all of their top earners from 40,000 pounds and above are just not registered to their Premier League squad. So why they have them, I don't know. They're signing players and then just not playing them. Andy Jones has been at Liverpool's entire career. This is the first season he's not played. So must have signed a new contract for big money <laughs> and then not played. And to be fair, if they wanted to, they could have gotten in the team. They're, they're 100,000 pounds under the salary cap. So they could have had him or, you know, two of the players under 50 grand a week. Like they could have had a couple of them. So let's have a look at the elite players in the world, players with at least 170 out of 200 current ability. And there's only one now left in the Premier League, which is one one I thought there was going to be. This guy plays for Man United and has played there his entire career. And to be fair, he's only on 52,000 pounds a week, has just played every single game. So I guess he's happy at Man United playing every game, I suppose. Uh, as you can see, Spain are dominating this. I have sorted this by the league look, as you can see, but it's not actually sorting it in alphabetical order. So you've got Bundesliga and Liga swapped in between a few La Liga clubs. But as you can see, it is La Liga dominating the elite player market. So they're just bringing over everyone. And here are all the players who are currently English, who have obviously left England to go and play in other divisions. If we just click on a few of them, started at Leicester, went on to West Ham and then Real Madrid. Uh, this guy, for example, Arsenal, Atletico Madrid. Uh, this guy, for example, has gone from Southampton to Bayern to Villarreal. So yeah, they are leaving England to go for the big wages elsewhere because they are so good and have got that potential. If we swap things around for potential ability being at least 170 and they are under 21 players, you can see here if we sort it by the league, hopefully we're going to see quite a lot of players being made in England. Interestingly, mostly in the championship, weirdly. That's surprising. So there's a higher concentration of really high potential players in England as we see from the actual eventual elite players, when they get to 170 current ability and above, they've all left by that point. Okay, so 33 years in the future, we are seeing the Premier League with a lower ranking. We're seeing the elite players just not playing for English clubs and players who have got high potential ability 
are being produced by England, but the evidence suggests they are leaving England pretty quickly. The salary cap might be making English football more competitive, but on a global scale, it's damaging the league. Okay, 2088, 66 years in the future. The Premier League is fourth in reputation rankings, although it is bouncing between fifth and fourth with France. Bundesliga, Serie A and uh, La Liga way above. As you can see in the Premier League, Everyone who's in the Premier League right now has been a Premier League club in the last 20 years in real life. Barnsley were in the Premier League in like 97, 98. So every team there has been in the Premier League in real life. So actually it's not changed that much. You could argue this is a an ordinary looking Premier League because they all have been Premier League clubs in real life. Arsenal, Man United absolutely dominate this as well. The odd win for Liverpool and Middlesbrough and Man City, but it's Arsenal, Man United all the way. Interestingly, Fulham have the highest annual spend on wages. Uh, but if we scroll down, there are there's one club still under about £26 million. But again, this is for every single player across every single team. I'd be interested to know what Fulham are doing though. They are, they've got quite a few players on like £40,000 and above. And a lot of them, as you can see, are not registered. That is, if we sort it by the wage here, yeah, there's a lot here that just are not registered. Why? It's odd because there is a hard salary cap in the rules, a hard salary cap, but potentially because the salary cap is only for the Premier League, it doesn't apply to the Champions League, it doesn't apply to the FA Cup or the League Cup. Maybe that's why they're buying these players. They just want to ensure they can get good players in to exclusively play in the Champions League, maybe. And potentially that says a lot about how the game potentially prioritizes competitions, potentially. The interesting thing is these clubs are gonna have so much money milling around. Like Fulham, for example, have got 1.02 billion in their bank accounts. So, so money's not an object to them, that's the thing. Leagues around the world, such as Australia, that does have a salary cap, those clubs aren't loaded. So even if they wanted to breach the salary cap, for content competitions, because I don't think the Asian Champions League will have a salary cap. Even if they wanted to do that, they couldn't do it because they'd have the money to do so. So we have created like a weird set of circumstances here. We've also created a set of circumstances where these are just like AI players, aren't they? They're not real people. Obviously, the best player in the world isn't gonna sign for Fulham to only ever play Champions League games. So it's a really interesting look here into the game's mechanics. And I, I'm fascinated by this. I'm going to assume this is having an impact in the Champions League. And since Real Madrid won it in 22-23, um, we look upwards and, well, I can't see a single English club not just winning it, but just not in the final at all. Not in the final at all. What? This is, I mean, Arsenal, okay. Arsenal got to a final here in 59-60 season. But that's the first English club I've seen Oh my word, there's not a single English winner and only one English finalist in 66 years. And this is why a salary cap would never ever be put in place for the Premier League. Because look at the effects. And again, there's only one elite player with 170 current ability and above playing in the Premier League. And he plays for Arsenal, he's a Greek guy. But the Premier League have got as many elite players as the United Arab Emirates Professional League. So... It does say something, doesn't it? Again, I'm trying to sort it by alphabetical stuff, but it's not doing it, so we'd have to try and guess a little bit here. But as you can see, in fact, if we sort it by club, maybe that might help with that a little better. Um, most people are playing in Spain. Elite players are mostly in Spain, quite a lot in France as well for PSG, unsurprisingly, but it's mostly Spain, uh, Germany as well. There are four elite English players and they're all playing outside of England. Uh, this guy was produced at Liverpool. Uh, this guy was produced at Man United. This guy was produced at Newcastle, and then this chap here was produced at Newcastle as well. But obviously they know they're good players, they want to get paid big money, so they're on the way to other clubs. So I think today with this salary cap, we have conclusively proved that the English Premier League is not the most reputable league in all of Europe anymore. Elite players do not want to be playing in the Premier League, they want to go elsewhere for the big wages, and all the wonder kids produced by English clubs are leaving. So this has obviously had a huge impact on English football. I'd like to do this experiment again with other salary caps with other leagues and potentially some lower salary caps as well. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. In the meantime, let's keep the fun rolling. We saw Lincoln City get to the Premier League in this experiment. Well, I've got them to the Premier League in my Let's Play save over on Twitch. And I've got the season five review on YouTube for you to watch right now. 